AC, which stands for Jeskai Ascendancy Combo here. We got our namesake, Jeskai Ascendancy. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, your things get 1-1 one, one until end of turn and they untap. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you may draw a card and then discard a card. So the idea with the combo in this deck is you get Ascendancy into play, and then you cast this card, Sylvan Awakening, with at least one mana up, and Sylvan Awakening turns all your lands into indestructible 2-2s, two and then you cast a one mana spell that triggers Jeskai Ascendancy, which untaps all of our lands and makes them bigger. What we do is we kind of chain through our deck with the drawing and discarding and our different cards that see extra cards to make our creature land uh, arbitrarily, uh, not quite arbitrarily large, but large enough to attack for lethal. We have Dig Through Time as well as Opt and Shimmer and Strategic Planning to help us find our key cards. And the post-board games against control decks, we need to diversify our threats a little bit. We got some Monastery Mentors in the board. So this is one of the many Pioneer decks you can find up on my website. We've played it a number of times in the past. I think it's super reasonable, a little bit interactive for decks that are faster than it, plenty uh, linear for decks that are trying to go over the top of it to beat them. So this is one that I've enjoyed for sure. This is an archetype that I poked at in Modern a little bit. Definitely a little bit better here than there. How's today, man? It's been all right. We had good sets with uh, the Legacy League this morning was fun. The Knights deck ran well. The green, green deck was a total dumpster fire. We both ran bad, and that deck's not terribly interesting. This deck does with three cards, but this does alone. No, that's not that's not really comparable at all. So but when you when you play these two cards together, your opponent dies the turn you play them. So like this deck is capable of killing people on the fourth turn. Like attacking them to zero. This is this is a combo deck. Little bit of controlling elements with impulse and charm, but largely just a combo deck. De yeah, deter deterministic means it's something that's certain to happen. So decks, decks like this when you're comboing, they're not always deterministic when you start. Because like you need to like hit a certain combination of things to go off fully. Yes, means your failure rate is 0%. Against fine. Doesn't have either of our combo pieces, but he's got to dig through time. It's got some interaction in it, so plenty to get set up. Unbridled growth here not only fixes our mana, but also just cantrips. Would we swap out for the Sylvan Carry Edits? I don't have a change log scholar. The last time we played this archetype, it had Sylvan Carry Edit in it, and it felt like it was a relevant early blocker in a number of matches, and also just helped us go off from tighter positions, so ended up adding it to the list on my website. Yeah, I think the Kisa's deck in this format is very reasonable. This this deck too. This and Kisa's would be my two picks for underexplored combo decks in this format. I think they're both things that not enough people have worked on. Ops a fine draw fills the graveyard for dig through time. Castle Garen Berg likely indicates our opponent's playing the ramp deck. This matchup's pretty okay. Sometimes we can race even their good draws. Howdy Vin. All right, there's one of our combo pieces. We'll go ahead and unbridled growth here. I have I have all of my colors this game, so this unbridled growth is definitely just going to be can tripping right away to try and fill the graveyard for dig. Blighted woodlands, a neat one. So you can you can ramp into more ramp, yo dog. Okay, so the fact that I hit Ascendancy here actually means I'm not sacrificing the growth. Because if I sacrifice the growth, I can't cast Ascendancy next turn. So we go blue, red, 
white and then uh we can kill them next turn potentially we go land sylvan awakening fiery impulse untap my lands dig through time yeah i think that's i think that's fair kane i also think a lot of people don't want to put in the lake work to like optimize a deck like that So we'll get to impulse to kill a blocker here. I suppose my opponent could theoretically, um, they could theoretically spatial contortion one of my lands next turn, making it a little bit harder for us to go off. This is just the clean turn three, four kill here. So all of our lands become two twos. We then fiery impulse this blocker, which untaps all my lands and makes them larger. We'll get to cast dig through time and go from there. Um, huh? I think Monastery Mentor is probably good here. Just as an extra way to win them. They don't really interact with the board too much outside of Ugin. Probably Trim Fiery Impulse, honestly. They don't have a lot of things we really need to kill. I guess if they're a build playing Land War Elves, I want these impulses. So I guess I don't really know. I'm going to split the difference on impulses and is it charms for now. See how that feels. How many and which cards do you think would set free? I'd unban Twin, Birthing Pod, and Green Sun Zenith, and probably the Artifact Lands. Twin, Twin, Pod, Green Sun Zenith, Artifact Lands. That would be it. That would be my answer for the time being. There's maybe other things on there that you could do too, but that would be a good place to start. Let us, let us Trinket Mage for Sea of Synod, please and thank you. I don't know, Green Sun Zenith is actually, and this is, this is saying something, Green Sun Zenith might actually be the least safe of that list of cards I just gave you, because Primeval Titan decks are arguably some of the best things in, in Modern right now. I don't know, like the first time you play an artifact land, you play a deck full of artifact lands and your opponent uses Ancient Grudge to double stone rain you, I feel like you're going to think twice about playing a bunch of artifact lands or like you get stony silenced off all your mana. All right, they are in fact playing elves. So probably want all my impulses. Yeah, I bet I bet you could probably still unban it, but that would that would be the one that I'd be most cautious about. Based on your experience with Magic, what do you think Watsi means when they say remastered Amonkhet? I think that means they're going to release as many Amonkhet cards as possible that require the minimalist amount of work for them to make them functional. So very clearly something changed in the arena code base that they can't just directly let people play with those cards. They just don't work for some reason. Something something changed and those cards just won't work how they were previously programmed. So I, I assume a remastered variation means that they're instead going to... going to get as much as possible, as many as possible, as easily as possible, just to like give people cards to play with that are like already basically programmed.
Okay, I took my ascendancy, so I'm just gonna go ahead and GM this monastery mentor here now then. Yeah, I I assume there has to be some underlying code issue why they didn't give us those sets back right away. Because Wizards loves low-hanging free money, right? Like what company doesn't? So like there's a bit there's a strong business reason to let people have those cards. And, like, be able to play with them. Yeah, they, I, I know for a fact that there's people that work at Wizards of the Coast that have a grudge, Android. There's a lit there is a literal shit list there. And I don't have a large enough presence to be worked with in spite of being on that shit list. So people like Saffron Olive and Tolarian Community College, they are also on that garbage list, but they're much larger than I am. Because you got to remember there's things outside of Twitch too. And like if you compare the numbers Goldfish gets everywhere and like TCC has on YouTube, they're much larger than my content here. So you need to be similarly sized to them to be on the list of people that they don't like working with and still get things on occasion. Okay, so I think the fact that they're on Elves means I'm going to bring in all the fiery impulses and cut these charms. I don't know. I think there's a lot of people who just, like, don't like me and think I'm paranoid. But, like, I, I've i talked to people at Wizards and other people, other people in the industry. Like, I know I have friends that work there. Like, I'm friends with... I'm, like, interact with Clarion Community College on the regular online. You're not paranoid unsubbing. <laughs> uh, yeah, it seems pretty good. He's got a pretty fast monastery mentor. I think we probably want to lead on mentor over over ascendancy. Probably want to prioritize getting a second blue here so we can guess dig through time when it comes up. It's not paranoid if they actually are out to get you. <laughs> So I think we're supposed to strategic planning on two here. Shimmer sees one more card. Uh, Fiery Impulse doesn't really do anything here because their ramp was Grazer. If their ramp was Elf, I would play Fiery Impulse, but I would take the Fire Impulse, but it was Grazer. If they don't have a way to kill the Mentor, this is definitely a hand where Mentor can run away with the game. It's a good draw. So looking to dodge Spatial Contortion here. Even if they have a Thought Knot Seer, my hand has a lot of cantrips in it. I think we lead on strategic planning because strategic planning notably puts the extra cards in our discard pile, not in, not on the bottom of our deck. So it helps us cast dig through time here. Huh? How much mana do they have? They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they could have eight mana for creatures next turn. So do, is it profitable to fiery impulse the elf this turn or do I take the land and then shimmer? I think I'm supposed to kill the elf here. I think I'm supposed to kill the elf because I want to, the idea, the, ideally here we want to pressure them enough before Ugin rears his ugly head, right? We really want to draw an untapped land next turn that lets us go Ascendancy into Opt in a perfect world. I 
I guess I lead on dig through time, huh? There's six cards in my bin. This gives us the best chance to hit a land. Get some auto yields on these. That's a tapped land, unfortunately. Um, so I definitely want a Botanical Sanctum. Because that lets me go Ascendancy plus Opt next turn. Do I want a Fiery Impulse past that? Maybe I just want a Backup Ascendancy. Or is it Sylvan Awakening? Maybe it's Awakening, so if they deal with my Mentor, I have uh, Ascendancy plus Awakening to go. Yeah, I think that's probably the plan, right? They get a free block on... One of my monk tokens here. But then they have to take five or chump block. Lilla bad. Thank you for the 23 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Unfortunate that I didn't find an untapped land to play a second spell this turn. Because a, a fourth monk token would have been really valuable. That's the the shrine here. So they get to Ugin me ahead of curve. Yay, ancient tomb. We just can't beat Ugin from this position, I don't think. Yeah, I guess at least it didn't matter that we didn't hit the untapped land. I'm a Jojo. Thank you for the 15 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Yeah, I don't think we have a... I don't think we have a comeback from this position. I think that matchup's okay. I think if they have, if they have their average draw on the play, though, they probably just get us. I think the ramp deck's average draw on the play beats most things in this format. Like, like our league with the ramp deck showed, you can just kind of flop around and do nothing some amount of the time, but that's just, that's just magic. Yeah, this hand's fine. Good to go. Carry added on two. Ascendancy on three. Start generating some card selection. Okay, the control matchup for this deck is hard game one, but post board we have a really good plan. Narset's obviously stellar against us. She's the reason why we have a bunch of copies of Fries in the board. And then we've got four Time Raveler plus Mentor as an alternative win condition. I have to go ahead and stick this Aether Hub here, which lets me play Ascendancy around Sensor and Syncopate this turn, which is great. Okay, now they do have D Sphere and three Mana Tefri that let them take this off the table potentially, but it does feel good to resolve it at least. Have a cast out. Yeah, that sucks. Now, if we're fortunate, we can strategic planning into a... <laughs> Would have been a real good, real good hit. We can strategic planning into another one of those. I think I'm going to take Shimmer here. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and pass the turn, I think, and hold up Is It Charm. So that way, if they GM a 5-mana Tefri, I can counter that. I definitely should have used the Aether Hub with the Shimmer last turn, though. It was a mistake on my part. I think I'm just trying to hit land drops at this point. The goal is basically to, like, do something at their end of turn and then untap and be able to... If we hit enough land drops, we can theoretically play Ascendancy and Awakening in the same turn and kill them from basically nothing. Which is nice. I'm gonna go ahead and dig here. I'm gonna leave one extra mana up to play around Sensor that these decks frequently play. Leaving an extra card in my bin is good in case I draw future digs. Is it Charm and Ascendancy are both great here. I 
So our goal here from this position is, like I mentioned, we're actually getting in a good spot to do it. A two and three aether is a great draw. We're going to set up where, like, they cast a spell, we tap them out using is it charm, we untap, we stick our thing, and we combo kill them. Um, there's still a mountain in my deck, right? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna grab the attune. Am I? Am I grabbing the attune? I'll just take the planes. Maybe holding up double charm is unnecessary. Am I supposed to just shimmer? Yeah, I'm just gonna shimmer. Holding up double charm seems unnecessary. I suppose if they stick three mana Tefri, I just tap them off of it, right? And grab an opt here. Shimmer, shimmer versus anticipates an interesting discussion. <laughs> Settle the wreckage resolves. <laughs> It's like, what are they, what are they tapping for, for? Oh, I clicked through opting. Yeah, yeah, getting it, getting in the bin for dig is, dig is good. It's good, it's a good thought. So if this resolve, if this doesn't resolve, I can stick the other one and protect it with Is a Charm. So now I'll just pass back. And then next turn we can Awakening with Double Charm up, which is appealing. If we steal, if we steal game one here, we're a huge favorite in the set. Our deck definitely gets better post board than theirs does. Second cast out, that's brutal. Oh, am I supposed to fight over this? I feel like I'm not with the second charm in my hand, or the second ascendancy, or the third ascendancy in my hand. Looking for like digs and other ascendancies at this point. Impulse is not great. Yeah, this game, this game's getting away from us here. We don't really have the tools to play through a bunch of their disruption. I think we just have to make them have it, basically. Maybe I should hold that land. That just resolved. Okay, go. It's like a third cast out. They could just have a third cast out. I think cast out's very good in this format. All right, found something new with their fiery impulse. Like I said, maybe should have kept that botanical sanctum. Okay, that 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 this means if they don't have a uh, if they don't have a way to take this off the table this turn, we get two awakening next turn twice. <laughs> All right, where tears coming in? Got it. I, under I understand. Where tears coming in? Dig. Maybe I should have looted in response just so I had the extra loot. It's very possible I should have just looted in response there. Well, they're auto passing, so that bodes well for us. I mean, draw the fourth JAC is the plan. I might have to dig through all of time to do it, but it is, it is the plan. We could also try to just two turn them with, with these. Yeah, that's true. Don't mind me, just can tripping. Go. That's all, that's all I got. I 
Are they just dead? What are the what are the odds they're just dead? Please be just dead. I would really like it if you were dead. What are the odds they have settled the wreckage in hand? Non-zero. Non-zero chance they have another settle. So we're gonna try and set ourselves up so we attack with like half our lands for lethal, I think. I think is the game plan here. Whew! <laughs> What a silly game. This is your this is your friendly reminder that disruption is not a replacement for killing your opponent. Your daily, your daily reminder that disruption is not a replacement for killing your opponent. All right, 12 cards in. What are we cutting? I think carry added comes out in this matchup. We don't need to go fast. Fiery Impulse definitely cuts. Yeah, they, they regret casting the subtle for sure. And that, that's honestly an example of percentage points you get playing an off-the-beaten-path deck like this. Like, until this becomes a more meta deck, people are going to make mistakes like that. They're not going to realize, like, what's important and what actually prevents you from winning. Is it crazy to cut one of these? I'm going to cut one of these. I feel like that's not crazy. All right, let's do this. Sure. Do we really need the fry? Yeah, we can't beat a Narset, Justin. Three mana, three mana Tefri is also slightly annoying, but Narset's like unbeatable. Hey, Jason, thanks for the 14 months. I appreciate it. Glad to hear you're excited for the new set. I'm going to be sitting down tomorrow to build a bunch of the build-arounds that are in the queue, plus add a couple other things in there. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is going to be a bunch of standard here. Gross. Feels, feels bad to draw two of my three basics early because it makes my two with the Aethers much worse later. What it feels like. It has been laggier than usual today. I even, I even checked. It was like running running slower like right off the bat. I restarted it fairly recently. Sweet. Okay, so they plus that. So I get to go. Aether Hub. Growth on here. Get some fried Tefri. Tune with the Aether, charges up my hub, which is sweet. Gets my last basic out of my deck. I think I dig it into turn here. I'm going to play around sensor again. That card's worth playing around in these matchups, especially at the cost of just delving one more card. Dispute, sure. That actually doesn't do anything. It counts as a spell for Ascendancy, but there are no more basics left in my deck at the moment. Spell Queller. Yep, that's a good one. How about Fried Spell Queller? Can you fry a spirit? I feel like I need a flavor judge on that one. Like, is that is that legal? Two cards left in their hand. We'd really like to draw a, uh... We'd like to draw that. That sounds good.
Maybe I'm supposed to wait on down ticking that. Maybe I'm supposed to wait so I can, like, go off on my next turn if they don't have a way to interact with my Tefri. The problem with not down ticking him is if they just have another cast out or a D sphere, I get in a lot of trouble. So we're going to cash in both these unbridled growths this turn. Okay. There go. They have one card left. They do they do get to kill my Tefri with the spell queller here, which is relevant. We just pass here. Yeah, I think three mana Tefri's ability would be would be fine in different colors. The fact that it's a card that's good against control decks, that control decks can also play, I think is part of the issue. Issues that it has too, that I have with it at least. So we're looking for a Mentor, a Dig Through Time, or another Sylvan Awakening at this point. Them pressuring our life total doesn't really matter. That's incredibly rude. It's incredibly rude. Dismiss. Dismiss Tefri like the troublesome student he is. I'm holding on to these other spells for now because um, in an ideal world... Oh, oh, this is wrong, actually. I should have I should have put this on one of my basics because they could field me in response and then I don't I don't get to resolve this card. So they should they should field me in response here. Which is a pretty big mistake. I'm down a card that way. And I'm actually down a land too, because I don't have another basic in my deck. Oh, they messed up. Deal. Deal. Uh I think I just pass. Bro, Hama Johns, thank you for the half a year of support. I appreciate that. Hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful Tuesday review out in the world. I put a card on the bottom. It's possible I'm supposed to dig on my turn just to, like, not give them the chance to hit other stuff. Hit counter spells here. Just dig, dig resolving is kind of important. I'm going to draw with the growth before I dig as well, because if I draw, like, a land here, I want to... <laughs> well, 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 well. Quill, quill, quill. Yes. 
tripping through time over here. Don't mind me. Don't, don't mind me. Just tripping through time. Well, and that, that resolved, so I assume this mentor is about to resolve. Go ahead and pass here. Maybe discarding the fry was ambitious. That was my last fry. Like, I have to kill this spell queller at some point. I guess I could just race it, potentially. All right. So I can't cast this one around Dispute, but I can cast it around Sensor. So I'm going to do that. They have a dig of their own here. Sure. Another dismissal would be very good here. I think we're still ahead if they don't take the mentor off the table. All right, so we're not getting dismissed. Let's get that going for us. Oh, that's a good one. Mana Confluent, Sylvan Awakening. Hey, Corey, thank you for the 21 months of support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. All right. Well, let's start with this. Counter or you die. I love the smell of desperation in the afternoon. That's, that's adorable. It's totes adorbs, chat. Or you're taking my ascendancy. You, you do realize Tefri bounces that, right, friendo? Our board, our board plan in this matchup is very good. I think this, I think this matchup is bad game one and our board plan is just excellent. Super, super content with our board plan in that matchup. Tiffery, Tiffery plus mentor is great. Fry is fine. <sighs> stuffing, stuffing blue white control in a box is one of my kinks chat. You're a hater. I am. I am. I just, I just missed the control decks that were encouraged to play win conditions. I wonder, I wonder if the control decks in this format would look different if Tefri couldn't tuck himself. You like, didn't make him an incidental win condition. That sounds fine. The lands are a little awkward. We need to find some of those, but... Has both our combo pieces and some lands that cast our cantrips, so. Okay, turn one game trail elf. Turn one game trail pelt collector, okay. Either way, not going to have a lot of time to mope around, so. Ideally want to hit a white or red land next turn, and then a white or red land the following turn, so we can cast uh, Ascendancy on three, and then kill them on four with Awakening. On the, on the draw, a lot of these aggressive decks are not going to give us time to mope around, so generally need a turn four kill. Also, we have some interaction. Not a land, bottom it. 
That's unfortunate. Once we, if we play Island as our second land, we're unable to play Ascendancy on three, which means the earliest we'll be able to kill is five. Okay, so I'm actually going to start on Opt because again, I just want to try and hit my land so I can play the Ascendancy on Curve. Yeah, it's like worst case scenario. Probably dead here. Yeah, yeah, we're just we're just dead. They have us dead on their four. So even even a turn four kill wouldn't have been good enough here because they were killing us on their turn four. So we have a roast, we have a couple of deafening clarions. More importantly, we have the ability to mulligan aggressively post board in a matchup like this. So this is definitely a matchup where what uh, knowing what we're playing against, how much pressure we're going to be under is going to dictate which hands are keepable and which ones aren't. Wanted to share this on Friday so I can make a stupid Friday the 13th pun, but since I'm going skiing, I can't watch any streams. Thanks for the 13 months, Sinbar. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Uh, yeah, this is fine. It doesn't have any of our combo pieces, but it has all of our colors of mana. It has some cantrips. It has the Deafening Clarion to keep us alive. Bridge us. Bridge us into the mid to late game. Mana Confluence being one of our lands kind of sucks against an aggro deck, but definitely in the realm of keepable. Think I'm in the market to cantrip into cantrips. Unbridled growth is actually nice here because it means I can play Deafening Clarion without uh, using energy or potentially mana confluencing. Although I probably just want a strategic planning this turn, especially with them not having a creature on one. Playing, playing Clarion on curve becomes less, uh, less, less, uh, less of an issue, less of a concern. Okay, so Sylvan Awakening is easily one of our combo pieces here. I just need to find an Ascendancy at this point. Voltaic Brawler, interesting. Hey, that's a good one. That sets us up for a turn four kill here, right? So next turn we go, Shock in the Land, Sylvan Awakening, Fiery Impulse, go. Dear opponent, please don't destroy my ascendancy. Don't don't do it. Have a heart. I would like I would like for you to die next turn. Please, please stop. Sweet. Alright, so they're dead. So how big do we need to make these? Not even that big, right? Because I can. Yeah, we're we're deterministic already. They could say, "Hey, roast you." Just attack for 20, right? This is, uh, this is like modern, only it's actually a turn four format. They killed us on their turn four. We killed them on our turn four. Good, good clean live in. Now, now we're on the draw for game three. So we have to like cross our fingers and hope for the best. Definitely going to want some interaction in our opening hand this game. So we probably can't just race them. Going to be looking for Clarions, Fiery Impulses, Is It Charms, Roast, stuff like that.
Sure. This hand does not have the interaction I was talking about, but it has carry added on to. Which I think makes it good enough to keep, maybe. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Don't burning tree emissary me, bro. God bless. Waiting on that Sylvan Awakening now. Strategic planning, at least, uh... Strategic planning at least fills up the bin for Dig, which is nice. Yep, so I'm getting attacked for 7 here, down to 11. I'm going to have to chump block with Sylvan Carry added next turn. Yeah. All right, so the plan is cast Ascendancy here, chump block, hope to draw. No, I'm, I'm just dead, right? Because I don't have a one mana spell. Even if I hat cast Ascendancy here and then... Yeah, we, we have no outs. Just effectively died. Someone effectively died on turn four every game. Said, said when we started that game, I probably should have mulligan for interaction. I guess I should have there. Need to be able to kill some other stuff. I don't know. They, they can't always kill us on turn four, I don't think. And it's hard to pass up. Carry added into Ascendancy, I think. Have you tried winning more die rolls? It is a good, it is a good suggestion. It's a strong line that I will consider moving forward. I try to be constructive. I appreciate you. So this hand, these Unbridled Growth, even though we don't need the fixing from them, they are cantrips, right? There's a great one green cantrip. It's one of the reasons why we play them. So this hand has one of our combo pieces and two cantrips in it with good mana. So this is definitely a keep. But Sylvan Awakening, looting into... Oh, that's a good call, Makia. Yeah, so I had, I had a narrow out there that I could have played too. It's a good, it's a good thing to point out. Just as one more general reminder for the day for people that aren't familiar with my schedule where it gets posted, I am going to be off tomorrow for my regular, so you'll have to go. I believe Day9 is going to be streaming as well as a bunch of other people who make excellent content streaming the, uh, the pre-release event for Magic Arena. And then I will be back on uh, Thursday with, uh, with my own content. Yeah, J Marty Punker will be streaming. Go watch Marty. He's great. Click on his name and give him a follow right now. I think it's Is It Charm. Is It Charm can kill the Soul Scar Mage to help keep me alive a little bit. Yep. I don't know, 15 here. I think I'm just shocking in. Stomping ground and then is it charming here? I'm actually gonna draw a card first. So if I draw Sylvan, I'm gonna play Ascendancy. If I don't draw Awakening, I'm gonna charm this. That's a different Sylvan. Okay, I guess I'm playing that. Yes, I guess that's still a Sylvan. That means I'm not playing Ascendancy. Hey, Blade Tycon. Thanks for cashing in your shillings. Uh, someone in the subs discord yesterday pointed out that there is a infinite combo in black white angels in the new set and I'm sure we're gonna play that till I'm blue in the face on this channel but it seems neat so if you wanted if you wanted to play angels I would recommend starting there oh I could have played this unbridled growth was free to play that was a mistake. So casting the growth would have untapped this, so I definitely should have done that. 
You need another combo. Uh, it's Divine Visitation, Woe Strider, and the... The what's it called thing that makes a token when an angel dies. There you go. Yeah, Bishop of Wings, Divine Visitation, Woe Strider. Those are the droids. My Sylvan carry added, chat. It's shrinking into the dirt. Yeah, we did a bunch of reactions the day that that, like, that cart was spoiled, Cinnabar. I'd be very surprised if that combo is still legal in a month. Second dig through time. Can I cast a second dig through time? I might not have the cards in my bin to cast a second dig through time here, huh? Okay, I think I gotta give you a. So this is all of my non-creature spells co effectively cost one less mana at the moment. Perfect. Okay, so they're dead. Dig through. Dig through time should mean we're pretty deterministic here. Tripping through time over here. Let's go find a bunch of can trips. Can tripping. I guess I sacrifice this before I loot. I'm actually not going to loot because all the cards in my hand are good. I'm just in for all these cantrips. Watsy seems to be like free sack outlets for people. What could ever go wrong? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I don't know that free sack outlets are inherently bad. I think they tend to lead to some interesting deck building choices in a way that's not necessarily terrible. Is it crazy to just click submit here? Like I have impulse and is it charm as some cheap interaction to deal with their early threats? Monastery Mentor is not good against their variety of burn spells. Okay, I think I'm just going to go ahead and click submit. Um, yeah, this is fine. I think Fiery Impulse in the opener is good. They're likely going to want a hand with Soul Scar Mage or Goblin Rabble Master in it, and Fiery Impulse lets us kill that first threat that they deploy. If they have uh, Kari Zev as their two drop, I've seen some builds playing that. We can't kill that right off the bat, but eventually Fiery Impulse hits Spell Mastery, and then it can. Wild Slash my face. Well, they understand what this game is about. And say that for them. No oh, Kari's at me, bro. Tilt. Alright. In for a combo piece. I'm gonna shock this in so I can kill a Rebel Master if they play it. We're taking three from this, though, which kind of sucks. They can't interact with us, so they are just racing.
Lightning Strike here. Just stop a base, sure. Now, we're actually not in that great of a spot here because we're pretty unlikely to kill them next turn. It's like we're taking at least three here, possibly more. Holy crap. So we're taking uh, seven here, down to four. So we have to, we have to draw, Sylvan. Well, I keep saying we have to draw Sylvan and then drawing Sylvan carry at it and it ended up being fine. So like, you know, I got that going for us. If they don't have a burn spell or a dragon or a haste creature, we get to live through this next combat step because we get to block. Okay, well, I mean, if... If they don't have lethal next turn, we, uh, if they don't kill us, we kill them, most likely. So we got that going for us. But dead to, dead to haste creatures, dead to burn spells. I get to fiery impulse at spell mastery now, so it gets to kill Karizev. And then we get to block the, th the, th the Torbrand. Why not go for the win with Sylvan Awakening? Because you have to have a land... Because Sylvan Awakening taps me out. So I can't play a spell and untap my lands. So Torbrand. Torbrand, that was their absolute best possible start against our, our Fiery Impulses interaction. Had yeah, just threat into threat that our Impulse just didn't line up into. Which is, again, why trying to be interactive in Magic tends to be a fool's errand. And you'd much rather just be proactive and try and kill people. This hand uh, needs um, a land and then another cheap spell, but we should hopefully be able to find those. So a Tomb of the Aether will fetch us a white source. Do we have more white or red in this deck is a good question. Do we have equal parts white and red? I have four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I have nine white and nine red. Okay, so it doesn't really matter which one I get. I guess I'll get red to start because red casts Fiery Impulse if we draw and that can help us stay alive. Then we're hoping Shimmer finds us a white source. And then we want a one mana spell, so on four we can go Awakening plus one mana spell kill you. If only we had Gitaxian Probe or Mishra's Bobble, right? Bobble, Bobble, something they're good for one. So Scarbage is real good. Hey, that's perfect. Actual, actual, factual best draw on here. We get to do this, and then we get to go tap land ascendancy next turn, and then Sylvan Awakening kill you the following turn. Really well set up for a turn turn four kill here. And again, my opponent's deck doesn't have discard spells, and it doesn't have uh, enchantment removal. So like. While their deck lines up well against a lot of the matchups where their red removal is good interaction, the red removal is just not interaction here, so they just die. You got it. Come at me. This matchup's probably pretty good for us. If you wanted to make it better, more deafening clear in out of the sideboard probably makes it great. But they just have a hard time linearing us before we kill them. This gives haste to you, right? So this spell untaps all of our lands twice, which then means we have lethal with this fiery impulse. I guess just the fiery impulse was lethal, huh? All right, so we're two and two. Playing for that burrito match. Let's see if we can get it. Get her done. 
This is going to be our last match of the afternoon. I appreciate everybody hanging out. I will not be live tomorrow again as a reminder. I'll be back on Thursday. Thursday morning, even though Thursday is going to be primarily standard with the new stuff on Arena, we are going to do one Pioneer League to start the morning Thursday morning. Because I, I go live before the update's supposed to be live on Arena, I believe. Uh, yeah, this is fine. It's got carry added. It's got the combo. It needs lands, but I have both opt and unbridled growth as cantrips. Seems pretty reasonable. We're on the play, which is a little worrisome, but like if we, we get what, three shots at the second land, and if we hit it on time, we get to carry added, which then lets us, lets us curve into the other stuff nicely. It's a little worrisome. Just like being spirits. Yikes. Sweet. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Just like, just like we drew it up, Chip. Mausolea Wanderer, notably here, cannot counter enchantment spells. Just instants and sorceries. So we get to do this. So they will be able to counter Sylvan Awakening. So we'll need to be able to play, play around that. Which, if they, if they have lords, if they have some lords here, this Mausoleum Wanderer could be a big problem. I guess I get to it Charm it. Do I just it Charm this and take it out of play? Is that is that actually the line? Do I do it now in case they have another lord? There's also the upside of sticking. I think I'm just supposed to stick this while they don't have Spell Queller up. The odds, the odds I can play through whatever they have is higher with Ascendancy in play. And getting Ascendancy down this turn means all my spells effectively cost one less mana from here on out. Because Sylvan Carry Added will untap, which is nice. So we're hoping to dodge Spell Queller and Second Lord here, which might be ambitious. Let's start with Strategic Planning and see where we go. I was thinking I could it Charm this in response to a Spell Queller, but I didn't have the land in play yet. I guess that doesn't quite work out. Play this past the turn. And then I can end step Charm the Wanderer. They counter it. We untap, we Awakening, and kill them. I think is an approximate plan. This matchup's probably tough. We're going to have to work for our 3-2. Our pile of Tefries in the sideboard should be okay, but I wouldn't be surprised if this one's gonna be gonna be hard. Oh, we have three fries, right? Fry, fry will be real good here. Clarion's okay. They have selfless spirit. This will definitely be a matchup where we where we become a lot more interactive and less linear. Because they have a lot of ways to interact with our linear game plan. So they have uh six power in the air right now, so odds of dying next turn are really low. I always forget how decent Fry is because it couldn't kill Oko. Yeah, it kills all, but like six loyalty was just so much. Just so much loyalty. So do we is it charm it now so they can't flash in a spirit response? Well, it was a 3-3 now. So is it charming it while it's a 3-3 is probably a less than stellar play. Thanks for the 15 months, Lebo. I appreciate that. Welcome back and thank you for the tier two at that. Now, if they let this resolve and hold up a spell color, they're not dead next turn, so that's probably their ideal play. Yeah, yeah, they played spell color last turn, so this was bigger. So it's bigger whenever they play a spirit.
Yeah, I agree, White Sticks. I actually like overall Oko's overall design. I like cards that have lots of choices on it. And Oko could have been like a very reasonable design if he had just been like a plus one minus one or a plus one minus two or minus three. Could have still could have still offered a lot of interesting gameplay patterns, I think. Instead of like what we got. Ha! <laughs> Fire impulse is actually absurd here. So I get to do this, and if they have a spell queller, we get to fiery impulse it. And then still be able to kill them this turn because of the dig through time. I am not crunchy. Only people Wizard of the Coast works with get early access. So I'll be I'll be taking tomorrow off and I'll be back on uh I'll be back on Thursday. So then the Sylvan Awakening Oh no! Oh, oh, oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh, Hogland, why are you so dumb, Hogland? All right, it's fine. We're gonna delve. We're gonna delve into another attune, another fiery impulse here. We're gonna dig. We're gonna dig into another fiery impulse. It's gonna be great. I promise. I promise it's gonna be great. No, that was in fact not my last communication with them. Not by a long shot. Why sticks? Thanks for thanks for trying to tell me how to do my job, though. Thanks for thanks for trying to tell me I don't understand how things work because I do. Hey chat! Hey chat, is our deck busted? I don't know if our deck's busted, but dig through time certainly is. Dig through time certainly is. We're just we're just playing the long Oh, maybe I should have taken the other fiery impulse here, huh? If I took the other fiery impulse, I get the strategic planning too. Uh, playing 4D chess over here. God, God bless Dig Through Time. Without without you, Dig Through Time, I'd have to be good at magic. Now, we're technically not deterministic from here. I could. There is a world where I brick off and die. Or I brick off and don't kill them, I suppose. Low, low probability, but possible. Another dig through time would probably lock things up. That should, that should, I'll, I'll do pig, I'll do. So we'll sack this to draw a card before we dig because I want to have a potential bad card in my hand to loot away just to make the probability of bricking even lower. This was honestly really impressive. We beat Mausoleum Wanderer, double Spell Queller this game. Did, um, were we on the play this game? Does anybody remember? I don't remember if we were on the play or the draw. Oh yeah, we were on the play and kept a one lander. Good call. This was the game we were on the play and kept a one lander. I remember commenting on that now. All right, so they're dead. Try maximizing damage. Nah, I want to eat lunch. Let's just kill them and get to the next game. And also, there's also value in, like, not showing them extra cards that are in my deck. 
Because, like, our deck's definitely way further off the beaten path than theirs is. I don't think this is a Monastery Mentor matchup, especially on the draw. I think this is definitely a Fry matchup. I think it's probably a Deafening Clarion matchup. Shimmer can probably come out. Maybe Clarion's too slow. Is this a Tefri matchup? What do you think? What do you think about three free? Three free is probably pretty good, right? He like unlocks a spell under a spell queller. It means they can't counter us. He's also, I mean, he doesn't kill spell queller. He gives it back to them, and like they have a lot of evasive cards that attack him. Like Tefri's much worse here than he is against like blue white control, for example. Yeah, I guess. I kind of feel like if I'm gonna fit something else in, it's probably Clarion, right? I mean, it doesn't, though, Cinnabar. Like, they're, all of their threats are evasive. So, like, if they have any creatures in play, Tefri doesn't do anything. He's also a three-mana spell that gets Spell Quellard. So, like, whenever Spell Quellard trades even on tempo, you're in a bad spot. And I might be right to just submit like this. My as as I've often said on stream, my golden rule of thumb is if I'm not a hundred percent certain I'm supposed to board something in in my linear deck, I just don't board it in because I want to like stay as linear as possible. So I think I'm gonna stick to that. I'm bringing in three more removal spells. We have ten removal spells post board here. Probably fine. I think I might bring in monastery mentor on the play because their deck doesn't really have any traditional removal in it and probably doesn't have any at all post-board against us. So if I just, like, turn three Mentor on the play, I can probably win the game a lot of the time. Easy mulligan here. Uh, yeah. God, carry added was a good add to this deck. It's been real clean a lot of the times that we played it. Pretty sure we just bought him take through time here. Like, we have Fry to kill a Spell Queller, and then, like, we have the combo, we have lands, we have carry added. I've waited 12 months for this. Thank you for the entire year of support, Just James. Let's get you a sword to go with that shield. Thanks for keeping me around. Perfect. Almost, almost had a moto disaster there. Our only double colored card in this deck is Dig Through Time, so you want to prioritize getting double blue in case you don't have it. You gotta rattle my chains, bro, or you gotta lord? Just some rattle chains, eh? Maybe I'm supposed to play the mana confluence here and take a damage but save an energy. Could go either way on that. Next turn, all will certainly play Mana Confluence and save the energy. When we play the Ascendancy. One thing worth noting is that even though Fry can't be countered, it can be Spellcaller, because Spellcaller doesn't counter the spell, it exiles it. Post-board, my opponent's also very likely to have cards in their deck that can destroy an artifact or enchantment. Maybe I'm not supposed to jam this into a spell pierce here. If they if they have like a spell pierce or a way to counter this here, I'm in a bad spot. I don't really have anything else going on. Yeah, dispute it sucks. I'm just supposed to like tap land go there since I'm not under much pressure. Yeah, they missed they missed their third land, but like I don't have anything going on now. So like looking for can trips, ascendancies, dig through times at this point. Although dig through times not even that useful yet, because I don't have uh, much much in the way I've been. Be right to impulse this rattle chain. 
to stop it from killing us. They have like a second rattle chain. I get into trouble for trying to kill it. Yeah, Spirits is a deck that's been around the fringes of Pioneer since the format started. I think a couple people have written some stuff about it. Definitely a very reasonable archetype. Flying, flying creatures are very strong in this format. Having, having evasion a little bit of disruption goes a long way. To set, to set a low bar, I think the Spirits deck's a lot better in this format than it ever was in Modern. Yeah, second round change, just like worst possible case scenario here. If they had a spell queller, I would have been able to fry the spell queller and still kill both their things, but second round change lets them add more pressure to the table, also stopping my removal spell here. Now we're on a three turn clock. Probably dead here. It's kind of flooded out. Yeah, sometimes they play mana creatures, but largely just collecting company. Collecting company is sometimes some sideboard utility, depending on what the person wants that has it built wants to hedge against. This is probably one spell too late. Awakening does give lands reach, doesn't it? That's funny. Hey, green light years. Thank you for the 10 months of support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. All right. So the fact they let that resolve says to me that they probably have a way to destroy it, which isn't stellar for us. In the event that my opponent has Stone Cold Nothing here, I could Sylvan Awakening and try and kill them. But I think the odds of them having Stone Cold Nothing here are low, so I'm just going to pass back and try and keep myself alive with this Fry. Need this Collected Company to whiff. I suppose I could also loot into a second removal spell here, but really need this to whiff. Need a fiery impulse here or another fry. Or an is it charm does it, I think. Alright. Don't call it a comeback. Still gonna be dead to another lord next turn. But I'm not dead on board. If I'd have killed this, I was still dead to a lord, so killing their lord's ideal. All right, survey says. Remember, chat, magic is nothing like gambling. Whew! Are they dead? They're not guaranteed dead, but they're... We hit. need to hit a dig through time. Dig through time or can't trip. Dig through time or can't trip. Dig through time or can't trip. Oh, I guess Wanderer muddles the math. I need to find a cheap spell. I need to find a cheap spell that I can cast through this Wanderer. Should have kept a tune. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I should have kept a tune. I was thinking if they countered the first Sylvan, I wanted a second one. But I'm not going to have time to cast a second one, right? So it was right to keep the attune. Now I need to draw. Now I'm hoping to draw a tune. Strategic planning. Perfect. All right, so we are not a lock from here, but we are probabilistically likely to kill them. Let's 
Uh, casting the Second Awakening first doesn't really do anything. Alright, so we get four looks and another cantrip here. Dig through time, puts this game away. Another cantrip is second best after dig through time, so we can keep looking for dig through time. That is the absolute worst cantrip we could draw. It's fine, it gives us a loot as well here. Are they dead? They're dead, right? We go... Is it charm, shock, this, untap all our lands, hit you for 20? Right? Is that right? That sounds right. They block one and take a bunch. Sick, sick set. I like this deck a lot. This this and Kisis, if you're interested in like off the beaten path combo decks, are definitely my my two picks for like things that are really sweet in this format that are underexplored. Both of these. This and Kisis both feel like really pretty genuinely powerful and like you win from spots where like this where you're like, all right, I'm super dead, but if I peel the right combination of things, we get them and you can frequently get them. Burrito, burrito obtained. Close set. Bobby, I don't think I have any changes to this deck list. This is card for card, the list that's been up on my website. So if you think this deck is sweet and you haven't seen it before, shame on you. You should check out jeffhoagland.com and click Pioneer Decks at the top. You'll find a bunch of sweet deck lists up there with the description of the deck, how it works, as well as videos of me playing it. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd run this back card for card. I was very, very happy with everything we, everything we did here, I think. Steven Lagden, thank you very much for the fourth month of Twitch Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Let me just make sure the list on my site is current. Yep, perfect. Card for card what we did here today. All right, I'm going to hit a quick ad roll as we head on out the door. I'll be back a Thursday morning, Thursday morning about 8 a.m. Central, a little bit before. We're going to kick off with a Pioneer deck, and then we're going to roll it into a bunch of standard on Magic Arena after opening a bunch of packs on Thursday afternoon. Now, this is off topic. In Arena, they have a temp game mode where you can discard a card to summon a random minion. Yeah, that's called uh, Momir. It's actually a game mode that was ported from Magic Online. Magic's premier play client that we are currently lagging on today. I tried to build a JAC commander deck based on your JAC videos, and it turned into a busted combo tutor deck that was unfun or unplayable. Sounds sounds about right. Combo combo and casual sounds like a tough, tough sell because of that. Either busted or unplayable. All right, catch you later, folks. Everybody enjoy the rest of your, your Tuesday.